Hello and welcome to another Trove video. Today we're going to be looking at more interesting geological photos that we've bumped into across our travels as we are gathering data for filling into our Trove databases. We'll also be featuring some photos that have been sent to us since our first video of geophotos. Let's get right into it. So kicking us off with some images sent to us from Oliver Button. Ollie, a few years ago, was completing his uh, master's at Aberdeen University, and he came and did a few months with us as an intern as part of that process. And so it's great to hear from Ollie and see that he's doing well working towards his PhD now and conducting research out in Utah, which is where he's sent these images from. So this is uh, from Clearwater Canyon in Utah, looking at the Cedar Mesa Formation, and we're looking at rootlets in plan view. Those are these uh, the parts bumping out of the host rock, and they have been dissolved and infilled with aeolian sediment, and the reason they're harder is because they've part silification and cementation uh, is why they are jutting out of the host rock there. Here's a, just an example of some preserved wave ripples as well. So thank you, Ollie. Next up, we spotted this iceberg with a very interesting layer in it of black stuff interpreted to potentially be sort of volcanic till or ash. And then, of course, the uh, iceberg has been tilted by buoyancy when it's entered the ocean. And uh, yes, ice is, of course, the crystalline form of water. Therefore, by that logic, can technically be described as a rock. And, of course, it would have originally been deposited horizontally as the snow falls. So moving on now to some rocks from South America. And this is the Colombo Quarry in Argentina. The, the red dotted line there is picking out a karstic surface in the quarry. Karst, in this case, refers to limestone rock that has then been dissolved and filled with new material. We've got an unconformity and we can see the cast carbonate lithologies have been filled with chert and phosphate concretions and intraformational breccia. So in this case, you can see the limestone here and then this big gash in it from the cast landscape. And that could have been a cave or um, eroded out from the limestone while it was above a water table at some point in its history before being infilled an image of Black Church Rock, Devon, England. Not much to say other than spectacular bedding exposed. Presumably a coastal location. Yeah, nice bedding. Moving on to some faults now. A rift valley in north central China. And so to accommodate crustal stretching, you get normal faults. Here are two faults intersecting. Can you tell which fault moved first? It's quite tricky with the shadows, actually, to see which is cutting through uh, the original. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. So some more faults now, slightly smaller scale. Still normal faults, which is how the Earth deals with extension through brittle rocks. We've marked on an interpretation here and you can see a, a road and the crags to sort of get an idea of scale. You can see that these are normal faults and this green layer has dropped down here. So that would therefore be a graben has been created here. Looking at this fault on the left, we can see that the green horizon has been displaced according to this interpretation, whereas the orange layer above has not been displaced. So this means that the sediments deposited here are on the grand scheme what would be called synrift sediments, but they've been deposited while the fault was moving to fill in that additional accommodation space created by the normal fault. And uh, from these two normal faults, looking at the orange layer, that both orange layers have slipped down and this is what remains, and that's now a host, a high point surrounded by normal faults. And you get large examples of these in all sort of rifted margins. Lots of these in the North Sea, for example. 
When extension happens, but the rocks are not brittle, they're more fluid, so it can be because they're very deep environments, we don't get faulting, instead you get folding and bending, and in this case, boudinage. And that's what these lumps here are, as this whole sequence has been stretched and extensional forces exerted on it. Some of the rocks thin in uh, layers, and some of the stronger layers sort of break into these lumps as the whole area is stretched and this comes from Brazil. So this looks like a virtual outcrop probably taken from drone footage around the coastline and we can see quite clearly a nice angular unconformity separating this folded um, and perhaps faulted uh, zone of rock here from the rock layers above. It's making an angular unconformity and we're talking about late carboniferous flysch turbidites in this lower layer that have then been folded and faulted um, and overlain by late Triassic red sandstone, this other side of the unconformity. And so there would have been a period in time when this lower rock was uplifted and exposed to the surface and eroded down to this point. Um, and then since then it's all um, been buried and had sediments deposited on it, and these have been buried to be lithified, and that's why we end up with this sequence again, now that it is once again uplifted at the surface. And these are from Vila do Bispo in Portugal. So next up, we're looking at a rather impressive bitumen seep. Bitumen, of course, pretty close to what we use as tarmac, so this is effectively a natural road, although I wouldn't really like to drive on it personally. Pretty cool. And this is uh, North Iraq, Kurdistan region. Seepage out of a fault plain, the Acre Formation. Another example of faulting. Um, here we can see it's a, it looks like a normal fault and some of the layers of continuity, this large, thick, what's probably a sandstone package, you can see it's moved a few meters, um, the displacement on the fault a few meters down to show this layer here. We can follow this horizontal layer as well up to here. And lots of muds or stone or silt stone interbedded with what is probably sandstones, um, rather crumbly cliff because of all that mudstone see it accumulating here at the base. Yeah, nice normal fault. Example of what's been tagged Minecraft geology here. And yes, it looks rather like the first subsurface logo that we don't use too much often anymore in favor of Trove. Um, here you can see what's probably thin bedding horizons that are now, instead of horizontal, they've been made vertical along with faulting perpendicular to them, so lots of 90 degree angles to create these steps. That's my initial interpretation anyway. Ah, and uh, a geologist's attempt at a Christmas tree. Here we have dolomitization. And so when you have limestone rocks formed, they can undergo dolomitization by some of the minerals, uh, calcite for dolomite. And this happens through fluid flowing through the limestone. So quite likely there's been a, a fault here that fluids have been able to pass through. And um, the reason for this shape is probably layers that are more permeable compared to areas where fluid can't pass through. And so you get this shape of limestone rock that has become dolomite and then the sort of host rock is, uh, remains unchanged here to create this pattern. So a hydrothermal dolomite. So next up, we have what is being termed box work. A very interesting looking outcrop, these thin lines crossing each other. One interpretation that was given on LinkedIn was that these are deformation bands. And so these are thin bands that run through the rock that form effectively when it's mechanically sort of crushed and they form these lines of harder zones that can be a nightmare for oil and gas industry because you can't identify these on seismic and they can really reduce the permeability of a rock. However, the author actually suggests that these are calcite veins and that they're deformed when fractures in the rock 
um, were open and were allowing a calcite rich fluid to flow through it and have resulted in these calcite veins that are now much harder than the matrix rock, presumably a, a sandstone of some sort. And finally, we're going to end on the ballerina rock, which is just a beautiful rock, very interesting balance, talented rock, you could say, uh, found in Saudi Arabia. I'm guessing it formed this way just because of erosional patterns. So, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and send in your photos to see if they make it on to our next Geophotos video. Take care and hope to see you back on our channel before too long. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.